Now here's a very interesting example dealing with thermal expansion. Now uh, let's say we have a steel beam. The beam is two meters long. It's being hemmed in, so let's say that we, we have it between two structures. Uh, so let's say there's a wall over here, there's a wall over there, holding the beam in so that the beam cannot expand. And let's say that we heat it from 20 degrees centigrade to 120 degrees centigrade. So it goes through 100 degree uh, centigrade degree temperature change. And of course, because of that, the beam would like to expand. But let's say that the beam is not allowed to expand. It's between two structures and the structure hemming it in. Then uh, how much force would those structures then be uh, pushing on the beam to keep it from expanding? It can, it can actually be done if enough force is applied. So first what we're going to do is figure out how much longer the beam would be if it wasn't hemmed in. So here we can say that L final is equal to L initial times 1 plus alpha delta t. And um, so uh, then to find the change in length, we'll see that in just a moment. But first of all, we have an initial length of 2 meters. We multiply that times 1 plus the alpha here for steel. Remember, it was 11 times 10 to the minus uh, 6 per centigrade degree. And the change in the temperature in this case would be 100 centigrade degrees. Uh, we know the parentheses there. The centigrade degrees cancel out. And let's find out what the new length will be. So this, uh, this would be 11 E6 minus times 100 uh, plus 1 equals. So this is equal to 2 meters times 1.0011 so times 2 equals. So we get 2.0022 meters. That would be L final. And so the change in the length is equal to L final minus L initial, which is 2.0022 meters minus 2 meters. And so that would be 0 0.0022 meters or 2.2 millimeters. Now that's not a lot of change, 2.2 millimeters, um, hmm, less than a tenth of an inch. But nevertheless, try to keep that beam from doing that. How much force would that require? So now we have to go back to a different discipline in physics. We have to go back to Young's modulus. And uh, we realize that uh, Young's modulus by definition is equal to the stress divided by the strain. We also need to know what the um, Young's modulus is for steel. And so Young's modulus for steel, um, of course, the only reason why I know that is because I just looked it up in my textbook. So Young's modulus for steel is equal to 20 times 10 to the minus 10 pascals. That would be newtons per square meter. And the stress by definition is equal to force divided by the cross-sectional area. The strain is equal to the delta L over the original length. And of course, the delta L is what we found over here. So that will eventually go into the equation right there. And what we're looking for, of course, is the force in this equation. So let's cross multiply and switch the equation around. So F divided by A is equal to this times this. So that means Young's modulus times delta L over the original length. And then plug in the A over here. We have the force is equal to the cross-sectional area times Young's modulus times the ratio of the delta L over the original length. All right, cross-sectional area we said was 100 square centimeters. Now in a square meter we have 10,000 square centimeters. So if we want to convert that to square meters, so we need uh, meters squared divided by centimeters squared, and that's 10,000. So you can see that this would be equal to 0 0.01 meters squared because, of course, you always want to use standard units. So that goes in here. That would be 0 0.01 meters squared times Young's modulus, which is 20 times 10 to the minus 10. Oh, not minus 10. Uh, what am I doing here? 20 minus 11. That doesn't make sense at all. This was supposed to be 10 to the 10th. This was supposed to be 10 to the 10th. I'm thinking about the coefficient of linear expansion. So no, there we go. Uh, and so that's 10 to the 10th pascals, which is newtons per square meter. Then notice, of course, that this square meters will cancel out with that square meters. We'll end up with newtons. And then the final uh, portion right here, which is delta L over L, uh, delta L would be um, 0 0.0022 meters divided by the original length of 2 meters, and of course meters cancels out, so you're just left with newtons. So using that in the equation, 
uh, divide by 2 and multiply times, <coughs> excuse me, 20 e to the tenth, and then multiply it times 0 0.01 equals, and oh, that's a big force. 2.2 million newtons. This is equal to 2,200,000 two, uh, 2, newtons. Hmm, let me check that one more time with my calculator. And sure enough, 2,200,000 2, newtons. Now, since there's about 4.5 newtons per pound, if we divide that by about 4.5, that would give us about, oh, close to a half a million pounds of force. So you can see, if you try to keep things from expanding, if you heat them up, you will need an enormous amount of force. And that's, of course, very important in engineering and physics. If, for example, you build things and you don't leave room for expansion, and once the room is, is gone and the thing keeps on expanding when it's heated, there's an enormous amount of force involved in that expansion. And, of course, if you don't build things right with enough of a gap, you will cause a lot of damage in structures by not allowing for the expansion, thermal expansion of different materials. So there's a very good example of how you can calculate the force required to keep something from expanding.